this is Amruta and the topic that we will be talking about now is ionophoresis. So, in the previous session we have discussed about phonophoresis. Ionophoresis and phonophoresis are similar procedures but however, the way we implement it and the modes that we use actually for the transfer of ions into the body are completely different, ok. So, let us just concentrate on the word what ionophoresis is, ok. So, So, ionto means ions and phoresis we already know is to migrate. So, what actually we are doing in ionophoresis is we are migrating the chemically charged ions into the body through the skin ok. And how are we actually doing this? In the phonophoresis we have used ultrasonic waves in order to transfer these ions or the medications into the body. But however, in the ionophoresis we do not use the ultrasonic waves, we use the current, electrical current. Now, what current is actually used in ionophoresis for the transfer of ions into the body? The current that is used here is continuous direct current. So, we use continuous direct current in ionophoresis to transfer the chemically charged ions into the body for therapeutic purposes, ok. Now, the question here is why are we actually using the direct current? Why can't we actually go for alternative current like the AC current? This is because the direct current helps in this unidirectional flow of the ions into the body, ok. That is why we go for DC current instead of AC current, ok, right. One more thing you will have to remember over here is ionophoresis is also called as transfer of ions technique, ok. One more thing you will have to remember over here is ionophoresis is also called as technique of ion transfer. Okay, ionophoresis is also called technique of ion transfer. So, we are actually transferring the ions into the body, ok. Now, what is the actual purpose of transferring of the ions into the body? We can actually give the ions actually these uh, chemically charged particles or actually the medications orally or through injections, right. If a patient comes to you with inflammation or maybe let us just say with pain, you can directly give them some anti-inflammatory drugs or maybe some uh, uh, painkillers directly to the patient which is actually much better, right. If you like prescribe a painkiller to a patient, he can actually go to a medical shop, he can get it, he can actually take it with some water or maybe if it is an injection then you can actually inject the medication into the patient. Why all this troublesome of bringing the patient, performing a whole new uh, lengthy procedure in order to treat the patient? This is because I have already told this in phonophoresis topic also. Whenever we are giving a drug, let it be a oral drug or maybe a injection, what it actually does is it will act generalized it throughout your body. It will act on every part of your body. Like the drug does not know that it will have to go to a particular location and it will have to act only there. So, if you are having pain in 2-3 locations in your body and if you are taking a painkiller, it will act on all these 2-3 locations wherever you are having pain. It will not only act in one position, ok. But here in the ionophoresis or maybe in the phonophoresis, what we actually do is we give the specific treatment to the particular area. For example, the concern of the patient is knee. The patient has pain in the area of knee. Then I can specifiedly give treatment to the knee, like isolatedly. No other part will be receiving these chemical ions and no other part will be receiving this current or maybe uh, the drugs, ok. So, I hope you are understanding why we are actually going for uh, this new procedure called as ionophoresis instead of going for normal pills or injections, ok. And one more thing as I have mentioned earlier in the videos, the painkillers, they severely act on your kidneys. You will end up with CKD or kidney failure if you take repeated painkillers. However, in ionophoresis and phonophoresis, we do not have such risks wherein your kidneys get damaged, ok. So, this is one more advantage of ionophoresis, ok. Besides this, ionophoresis is a very sterile method, it is a non-invasive method and it is also, as I have said, it has lesser complications when it is compared to the normal uh, tablets or the injections whatever we take, ok. And also, Specific isolated treatment can be given to the particular area like you can completely focus the treatment to that area and completely give the drug to one specific area, ok. And most importantly, the ionophoresis is also a painless method. So, 
that is why uh, opting for iontophoresis is better instead of going for oral drugs or maybe injections okay right so till now we have seen that what iontophoresis is and how like uh, the drugs are actually being or the ions are actually being transferred into the body okay now let's just see much deeper into iontophoresis okay coming to the principle of iontophoresis now how does actually iontophoresis work okay i'll give you just a glimpse about how the procedure of iontophoresis is we'll discuss in detail about the procedure later okay actually what happens is when we are actually performing this method of iontophoresis we actually take a lint or a cloth or maybe a towel any material which is capable of absorbing solution okay we'll take such material we'll prepare a solution which constitutes of water and the active ions whatever we want to treat the patient with for example let's just say i want to treat a patient who has inflammation i'll take a an anti inflammatory drug i'll mix it up in water and i'll prepare a solution okay in the phono forces what we have done the drug whatever we wanted to transfer into the patient's body we have taken it in a form of cream or gel like shortly to be in phono forces what we have done whatever the drug what we wanted to transfer into the patient's body we have taken it in a form of paste or a gel like simply to say we have taken it in a form of ointment okay but here we don't take drugs in such manner okay we take drugs in a solution manner like we prepare a solution okay we take the drug we mix it in water okay so we'll take some water we'll mix the anti inflammatory drug whatever we want to take and we'll prepare the solution now what we'll do the cloth that we have taken or the lint whatever we have taken we'll dip this in this solution and we'll place it underneath the electrode and we'll turn on the machine okay this is the brief description of how the procedure actually is done in iontophoresis okay right now why i've said this is i want you to better understand how this principle works okay that's why i've given you this glimpse of how the procedure is actually performed in iontophoresis so coming to the principle of iontophoresis in the iontophoresis what actually happens is whatever the lint that we have taken or whatever the cloth that we have taken which we have dipped in the uh, chemically active solution I, i've said that we'll have to place it underneath the electrode now the question is under what electrode should we place the lint or maybe the cloth the thing is whenever we are preparing a solution with this ions ions can be positively charged or maybe negatively charged okay so whenever you are preparing a solution which is made up of positive ions then you will have to place this lint which is soaked in the solution under the positive electrode and when the solution is made up of negative ions negatively charged ions then the lint that is soaked in the solution has to be placed under the negative electrode i hope you are understanding see i have placed a solution that is made up of positively charged ions now what i'll do i'll place the electrode now what i'll do i'll place the lint or maybe the cotton or the towel whatever i have soaked in this solution under the positive electrode which is the anode okay which is the anode now if i've taken negatively charged ions and i've made a solution with it then i'll dip my cotton or the lint in it and i'll place it under the negative electrode which is cathode okay so here normally generally when we take electrodes what we actually do is anode is considered as the positive electrode and cathode is considered as the negative electrode that we already know and even here also the same thing happens anode is positive and cathode is negative but usually what we consider anode we consider as active electrode right and cathode is considered as inactive electrode like generally i'm talking about okay but here in iontophoresis this is not actually the way this is not actually how we consider the electrodes okay if you are using a solution which is made up of completely negative ions okay then what i've said we'll place it under the cathode which is a negative electrode right now this cathode because the solution soaked towel or the lint is placed under the cathode this cathode will now be considered as active i hope you are understanding usually we consider anode as active and cathode as inactive but here in iontophoresis what we do is if we are using a negatively charged solution then the negative electrode which is the cathode becomes the active electrode okay so that's something you'll have to remember over here and now the question actually here is why are we placing the negatively charged ions under the negative electrode and why are we placing the positively charged ions under the positive electrode the thing is if you are placing the equally charged ions like for example if i have prepared a negatively charged solution and i have placed this under the negative electrode 
what happens because both are negative they repel with each other and they help in this penetration of the ions into the body tissue okay this is the principle on which it works okay and one more thing i just want to mention over here is if the solution that is made by you is completely positive okay then it is called as anodal iontophoresis and when you are using a negatively charged ions and when you are using a cathode it is called as cathodal iontophoresis okay so if the anode is active over here then you will call it as a anodal iontophoresis and if the cathode is positive over here like if the cathode is not positive actually if the cathode is active over here then you call it a cathodal iontophoresis okay that's something right and one more thing i just want to mention over here is now we have understood that okay we are placing the negative ions under the negative electrode the positive ions are being placed under the positive electrode okay the repelling is happening and the ions are actually penetrating into the body now there are two factors which actually determine this penetration okay what are these two factors so the first one is strength of electric field and the second one is skin resistance now what is strength of electric field see the strength of the electric field is very important because it actually uh, determines the increase or decreased penetration of the ions into your body so the strength is very very important because as i've already mentioned it completely determines the amount of ions that actually will be sent into your body okay that's very important and now how do we actually control this strength of uh, electric field how do we actually do that so if you actually go for a bigger electrode what actually happens is the intensity will decrease i've taken a large electrode okay so what happens the intensity will decrease once the intensity gets decreased what will happen obviously the ions that are supposed to be go the concentration of the ions that are supposed to be sent into the body will also decrease i hope you are understanding so if you are taking a larger electrode what actually happens is the intensity decreases because the intensity is decreasing the concentration of the ions into the body also decreases okay that's one thing to be noted so always properly choose the strength of the electric field because it determines the concentration of the ions that are supposed to be sent into your body okay right and the next one is skin resistance you know that we all know that skin offers resistance right so in order to decrease the resistance what we'll have to do we'll have to clean the area whatever we are treating like if any dust particles are present in that area they offer resistance so you'll have to clean the area whatever we are treating and also you'll have to remove the hair follicles because the hair follicles also produce resistance okay when the resistance is being increased what happens the ions cannot transfer into the body so that's something you'll have to do you'll have to check with the strength of the electric field and also you'll have to check with the skin resistance okay